We only need the fourth. If, if that one can get down, start attacking, start accelerating the energies, the, then uh, the rest of the deck can just take over for it, right? That's what we're hoping for here. And Ooh. we... <laughs> Thankfully, the fourth Arceus V-Star is the starter for Michael here. The fourth Arceus, my goodness. Okay, so the fourth Arceus is finally here. Facing down a Manaphy, again, sometimes one of these ba basics that you have as a supporter for your deck can just take up this active slot. And as long as you can pivot to something very quickly, it's not too bad, but both players now in a pretty precarious position. If, if Parker can get an early KO on this Arceus V before it can do the work it needs to do. <laughs> yeah, well, thankfully, the way both of these decks are built up, there's there's no real KO coming on the, mm -hmm. the first turn of the game from your opponent. There's no Meloetta mm -hmm. and uh, Sparkle going on. So thankfully, a little bit safe, but this is where Michael is looking through, and he's like, oh, oh no. It's going it's yeah, to be exactly. one of these games. You get that first deep search with the quick ball, taking stock of all the tools that you have at your disposal, and Michael is uh, chilling. We've seen players scoop before, you know, with a lot of your, <laughs> your key. As soon as you realize a lot of your key Pokemon are in the prizes, you know that you, this is going to be too much of an uphill battle for me. Let's just go to game two. I'll just win the 2 0. Uh, but uh, Michael's sticking with it, has the Bidoof. And he's just shuffling, and with the industrious incisors, right, you're just going to draw more cards, and so the confidence is still there, being able to work your way out of this situation. And the double turbo energy to start off things as well, that means just one more energy, and the Arceus V-Star, and Michael is good to go, and could start taking prizes, hopefully hit those other Arceus. Mm -hmm. We need a couple more basics to come out for Parker, get something on the bench. Yep, there's a quick ball, gets rid of boss's orders. Not too shabby. Going to also take this opportunity to take a deep look through the deck. And there's the Arceus V. Both players now getting finally, uh, you know, pretty solid foundations here. And now with Parker getting a threat potentially, you know, Michael needs to play very precious with this Arceus V. Needs to, at, if it can't attack at the very least, get the evolution so you can use that Starbird. Yeah, but it's going to be an uphill battle, Parker. Again, discarding that Crushing Hammer because the Fan of Waves is in hand already. So being able to deal with that double turbo energy will set Michael back a turn at least and possibly more depending on the hand. And the way the players make use, right, of the, of the Fan of Waves, the Crushing Hammer, if you can slow your opponent down by one or two turns, that's exactly what matters. It wasn't quite enough to stop Mew when players were first experimenting with this sort of like uh, batch of cards at the very beginning, but now there's a lot more decks that aren't as quick and as consistent, so we're seeing the value really show up here. Well, it's with these Arceus decks in general, uh, they need their energy attachments every mm -hmm. turn. Every time you miss an energy attachment, it feels like your deck is the worst deck in the room. And that's why we see like some of the decks try to get around it with like Magma Basin and that Charizard yeah. like, energy switch or the Galarian Moltres V to energy switch it away. You got Melanie and Raihan cards that able to accelerate energy from the discard. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the way Michael has his deck, there's not really too much of that going on here. That, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the fan of waves was absolutely devastating. Michael's struggling to figure out even what to do. Goes for the adventurers here. Yeah, being able to search for three Pokemon V, but this is just going to be a couple of Malamar, maybe that Arceus V-Star. Uh, you do see that ditto. So that is a way to get another Arceus V in play if this first one gets knocked out. Yeah. If only, if only. Uh, I guess we can maybe try to get the Malamar down. There's the ditto V, but there's just nothing to help out here with the adventurer's discovery. At the very least, you can take a look through your deck and have a better idea of what you want to play towards, but I'm really struggling to think of what Adventurer's Discovery even wants to grab here at this point with the other Arceus V in the prizes. It was looking fine at first, but that fan of waves was just so devastating. Just has to pick what is available here. Malamar, Ditto, and the V-Star. Good three selection for the options you have. And then with Ultra Ball, we'll be able to find that uh, B-Barrel and be able to draw more cards here. So still has a chance to find the energy needed to attach this turn. Okay. Hopefully play on for next turn. But Parker's game plan now is I am never going to let you get three energy on an Arceus V, especially when you just Adventures Discovery and did not grab another one. Mm -hmm. That's telling. 
Yes, yes, very telling. And this, and with Parker knowing that the weight of the world is on the shoulders of this Arceus V right now in the active for Michael, uh, you are now shifting to become more aggressive. Try to take this down. Industrious and Size are drawing a dark energy. We're trying to get there, the darkness energy, with an attachment here. Again, pivoting to the Malamar VMAX is really what Michael needs to hope for at this point. Uh, that was actually a pretty heads-up play from Michael there, uh, opting not to play down that Arceus V-Star before the Industrious Incisors. Most of you think, well, that's just one extra card you can draw, right? Mm -hmm. But if you draw that double turbo energy, you can Trinity Charge and be able to get those energy in play. But this is the worst-case scenario for Michael. Parker hits that Crushing Hammer heads. Mm -hmm. That Dark Energy gets in the discard, and there's just almost no hope. Uh, although, Parker does need to draw a few more cards. Oh, yeah, the new tech on the block. Big Parasol, you got to read that one. <laughs> or just admire the bling, the golden Big Parasol. Had that one in the pocket all ready to go, waiting for the specific metagame, no doubt. Arceus pulling its own Mary Poppins cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> so Mary Poppins now on the bench for Parker Lish. And Manaphy's just been sitting here. I was worried that having such a teeny basic uh, in the active spot would be detrimental, but... Uh, because hey, when Michael your, when can't, your attack, can't attack, it's, yeah, who cares? it's safe. It's completely safe. And this is where things are going to get very dire for Michael because now Parker has this Arceus V-Star in play, can Starbirth, four more crushing hammers. Another research with no cards in hand, too. This is just the best possible start for Parker here. Even And even now, without even if there weren't any Arceus in the prizes for Michael, you would still be almost in the same situation, I'm certain, where your energy is getting controlled, you can't get any attacks off. Parker's buying so much time to set up, and he's living his best life. Yeah, and it's the way Parker built his deck as well. Uh, going second really is the best possible option, at least in this matchup. Mm. Uh, your opponent can't Trinity Charge with that double turbo, so they won't be able to get extra energy in play. And then you can take care of it right away because you have seven cards that do nothing when you go first, but they're pretty good when you go second. And even gets the Oranguru uh -huh. now. This is going to opt for even more utility with that Primate Wisdom. You can take Primate a card wisdom. from your hand, place it on top of your deck, and then draw there. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a, a double uh, utility because you can put a card back that you don't need, mm -hmm. shuffle it away like Parker's doing here, or... You have a, a boss's orders or something that you really need next turn, and mm -hmm. you know your opponent's going to Marnie. Just place that on top, and you got a boss's orders for next turn. This That was a play from a, from a couple metas ago, right? Oranguru was very important for that specifically. And with you know Arceus and Mew just drawing so many cards, the Marnies were less impactful. But here, just being able to get the cards that you want, save them for later, set up plays one or two rounds in advance with these more drawn out games, this sort of play, this style of deck is much more accentuated. And finally, we get the air balloon. Manaphy is gonna float to safety back onto the bench. And now the attacks are gonna come raining down onto Michael Bergerac's board. And this is the hard part. Uh, by evolving into the V-Star, you kind of save the Arceus from maybe a potential choice belt knockout uh, mm -hmm. around the corner. But you lose out on that Trinity there. Charge and not having another one in the deck, you have to get three energy. And the only way that Michael can accelerate energy here is a Raihan. Well, the only way you can use a Raihan is if you get knocked out. And mm -hmm. the thing that's going to get knocked out is that Arceus V-Star. Given up a couple prizes already. And if once this Arceus V-Star goes down, it's going to be so difficult to, to pivot to anything, right? Because these, these Malamars are not set up. We've got Luminion V with one more bench slot. Maybe we can play that down, try to look for some combination here. But uh, Michael's still sticking with it, right? Keeping stock of all the resources in the discard pile, trying to still find a plan. And we've complimented these players so much on their efficiency, their ability to... Um, you know, optimize these decks, but also their ability to read the game and understand even though the situation looks very dire, I have certain outs, certain things I can still play toward, and we'll see if Michael can put it all together here. It does seem to be like the worst case scenario for Michael with this matchup. The three fan of waves just punishing mm -hmm. uh, the way that he built the deck, even having an extra special energy in there with that powerful colorless energy to try to get that extra damage and opts for the final bench slot to go to another Bidoof. 
with double industrious incisors with the right sequences, you can empty your hand, use that, empty your hand, go again. You know, we have a, you know, build your own Genesect sort of vibe going on over here. Well, here is the first one. Double Does, turbo. Yeah, finds the double turbo. Had to attach to the Malamar V on the bench, though, so is most likely just going to pass the turn. I do believe they still have access to a supporter, so. Mm -hmm. So I guess at this point, Michael's just hoping for this Arceus V-Star to get uh, KO'd, bring the Malamar up, get the double turbo on there, and there's the Marnie. The Again, though, this Marnie is really just not going to do too much. Michael is not going to attack this turn. Uh, you're not going to attack most likely next turn. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to dodge a crushing hammer. And <laughs> oh, there it is. The, the coin flip still needs to hit, though. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the crushing hammers have been very crushing indeed, but there's still one more coin flip that needs to happen. And there we see the Starbirth V-Star ability from Arceus V-Star. Gets two cards to set up for next turn and most likely just a pass. And we'll have to see what Michael's going to grab here. Has to anticipate one more uh, potential energy disruption card. Might just fish for a couple energies here to play around that. With the Arceus V in the, again, in the prizes for Michael, there's no way to pivot to set up a potential second energy charge. And we complimented Arceus so much on being able to accelerate these energies, <laughs> make these expensive, slower attacks a little bit more user-friendly. And now we're like, oh no, it's out of the equation. And these cards that were overlooked before are once again showing off their clunkiness. Yeah, might as well just Put them back in the binder if there's no Arceus <laughs> accelerating the Malamar Vs here. Uh, it is just not what you want to see. But again, this is still game one. We True. play best of three matches. So mm -hmm. you have two more games to try to come back. That's why we do it, because your prize cards could just mess you up sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we see it here. Uh, although, again, like you said, I think this game probably still would have played out the same. Yeah. Uh, the disruption was absolutely horrendous that this Arceus has not had a chance to attack at all for Michael. And finally, Malamar VMAX does find its way onto the bench. We've got that powerful Max Jammer. Hopefully, there, there's a, ironically, a way this game comes back into it, where Michael sets up the, the Malamar, gets the forbidden combo of Max Jammer into Marnie, and then Parker Bricks for the rest of the game, right? Yeah, but with two Arceus V-Stars fully powered up, that's a lot to get through. <laughs> and that's exactly what Parker wanted. You use the energy disruption to slow down your opponent, and this allows you to get a massive fighting force up and ready to go. And there's the counter Marnie. Oh, just a few energy for Michael there. Yeah, it turns out they were all there, ready to go, but it's still... Not looking that great for Michael. Parker now in the complete, like, driver's seat. We could see uh, Boss's orders uh, to take this Malamar down. Out. That would be next turn. Okay. Yeah. Just going to knock this out. Again, so you get two prizes here. Now the game's finally starting to get going, right? Okay. You, you'll start to see some, some back and forth. Maybe some sh uh, Sharon's Care can heal Arceus. up some Arceus uh, from a Max Jammer attack. Uh, but right now, Michael needs to find the one of copy of Raihan to even get an attack off this turn. And with four energy in hand, this industrious incisor is not going to be munching on too much. Mm. And, and this has been what Michael's been forced to do every single turn is attach the energy so you have space in the hand to get that draw. Oh, no. And we see it here. Michael's not even going to go for, or, yeah, you have to. There's no second uh, B-barrel in play. So mm -hmm. no access to the Raihan means no attack yet again. Using up that supporter, just trying to disrupt, trying to keep Parker from having the key cards to close this game out. Um, there is the other B-barrel in hand, however. Get into the round of draws, perhaps. But we're still one energy short of getting that max jammer online. Ultra Ball does discard the powerful Colorless Energy and Professor's Research for that Luminion V. So, Luminion, the card Michael kind of needed at the start of this turn to get that Raihan, but <laughs> we'll be able to find it potentially next turn. 
And so ditto V going to the discard pile in order to bring back Arceus V, evolve into Arceus V star, and then incisors to draw back up to five cards. So Michael's still sequencing very well here, keeping a lot of resources. Everything else has kind of been at Michael's disposal except for the energies. And here we see Air Balloon just to get that Malamar VMAX out of danger, bring up that Arceus V star and hope for the best. But Parker has a boss's orders in hand. That's pretty good. Another evolution into Arceus V star. Thinking about which one do I want to boss up? Do I want to attack? Set up two. There's the boss. Malamar VMAX now in the active spot with two energies. This will allow Parker to deal that two or uh, 180 damage, get the two hit knockout on it, being able to accelerate that last energy to the Arceus V Star on the bench. And now you have your board completely set up. Michael needs to go through these three Arceus, and I don't know if he can do it with the way this game's been progressing. Uh, you're going to have to attach an energy to the active to probably get an attack mm -hmm. off, but. Here's the Rose from that Luminion B. And Rose, um, you can attach up to basic energy cards from your discard pile to one of your VMAXs. So this is now the way to get this second uh, Malamar set up. Um, but And the rest of the hand isn't really that good. So we're going to thin out, discard the rest. And here comes the attachment. But I think it might be too far gone. Michael stuck with it, got the combo to finally come together here, but with those crushing hammers, everything was just so, uh, so delayed. Well, here we see Hyper Potion is one of those cards that could kind of claw Michael back into this game, but only two copies in the deck. He did discard one during the first turn, so we'll have to play with this one really carefully, but it could save a potential two-hit knockout to a three-hit knockout. If you can buy yourself another turn, this is what the players have been doing to each other now, is just trying to slow down their opponent as much as possible. And so finally, the Max Jammer hits. It's going to be a little bit of a reduced damage because of the double tur uh, from the double turbo, plot, and then that's offset by the choice belt. And then gets to pick a card to go back in the deck. None of them really do much. You could do the Ultra Ball just because it's the only card that actually does something. Yeah, true. Send that back to the bottom of the deck. And so maybe Michael gets something here. You start attacking, sending your opponent's cards back down to the bottom of the deck. And then Parker, even though there is Arceus available to attack with that Hyper Potion, will it come down to just how many rounds can I buy from this position? and how many cards Parker draws that don't do anything. There was another path to the peak on top of the deck from that Primate Wisdom. So gets to shuffle it away with that Trinity Nova. And now Michael at least has a game plan. You can Hyper Potion, get rid of that double turbo energy, mm -hmm. heal that 120. That means you have 60. And yep. yeah, this, this is a route that you can take. You even have another double turbo. So... Won't this, do too yeah, much. the double turbo energy being uh, added to the, the game just really allowed Hyper Potion to be used so flexibly and just so quickly without setting your game plan too far back. And with, uh, with that, could buy a couple extra turns of uh, defensive here, defensive play. And Parker desperately looking for you know another switch, some sort of boss's orders perhaps. Is there one more left in the deck? There is one boss left or in the deck for uh, Michael, but... Okay. Did draw it off the Industrious Incisors, but won't really need it right now. Uh, really just try to hunt down that KO. In the There's another turns. jammer, Raihan, going to the bottom of the deck. Is Michael going to bring this one back just by nature of denying those resources to Parker? There's still a lot of damage to be had. No more Hyper Potions left for Michael, so perhaps there is enough damage still yet for Parker Lish to put down onto this Malamar. Oh no, these Path to the Peaks are just not wanting to go away. Parker keeps putting it back into the deck and then shuffling it away, but just somehow seems to find another copy the next turn. And there's the Trinity Nova with the, uh, with the Choice Belt here. 230 damage. 
again, though, not enough to take the knockout on the Malamar VMAX. So, fought another turn thanks to that Hyper Potion, did Michael, and still needs to take down these two Arceus V-Stars, but it's looking a little bit better than it has been the entire game. These are some strong Pokemon, but they aren't known for their, you know, high damage. It's yeah. about their utility. So being able to set up these key two-turn KOs is so important. And I don't know if Michael has enough time anymore. Like, this has been such a valiant effort. And with so many resources available right now, with the double uh, Bibarel on the bench, we have access to a lot of draws. Um, but now things are, are starting to get slowed down. The Path of the Peak is now in play. We can't overwrite that. We have double turbo, but no hyper potion. And I think, I think this is just Parker just needing to keep up the pressure, right? We've got the two Arceus V-Star ready to go, and it's just going to be continuous damage still pouring out for Parker's side. This Max Jammer, though, has been just an inconvenience for Parker here. Uh, not even having the best cards in hand, but it's, you still don't want no cards in your hand. You at least mm -hmm. want something you can do. And if, you know, the top decks start to become like Ultra Balls and things that were shuffled away previously, you know, then you don't have the resources to discard away to even activate those. That was a big crushing hammer, getting rid of that double turbo energy on the Arceus V-Star. That means that Michael if he wants to attack, we'll have to attack with that other Malamar VMAX, and that's just a no-go. Uh, that gets knocked out with that other Arceus V-Star on the bench, and you're going down to yeah. the game two. <laughs> you, you, wa you wanted that double turbo on the Arceus V-Star, so you can pull it out, put that third energy down, have an additional attacker, not have to put this one up. And so Michael, at the very least with the air balloon, can just send it up to the active, think about what the line is going to be. And... We're looking for it. Is there a Raihan potentially available? You would need to discard the hand down enough to draw some cards. No, it's looking like just a boss's orders to maybe stall a turn here so you can get the attack off. That's been the name of this entire game, Jeremy, oh. is just stalling, stalling, stalling. Well, here is a quick ball just to thin the hand down, get some cards out of the deck. There is already... Oh, okay, yeah. So there's the air balloon in hand. You have quick ball for the pump kaboo, quick ball for Luminion. The pump kaboo will get rid of that path to the peak in play. Luminion will get that boss's orders. And with the air balloon, we'll be able to retreat the Ranguru. And with that, Parker has cobbled together the entire hand here to pull off this game one victory. Ironically, you know, your hand is all gone <laughs> and you've taken down the Malabar deck. It's like, you wanted my hand to be gone, right? Well, I've got everything I need. And yep, that is the Trinity Nova for the KO. And with that, Parker takes the game one lead here in mm -hmm. our round four in Secaucus. And it looked really just one-sided in the yeah. beginning, but Malamar able to come back a little bit, but just a little bit, but not enough, yeah. right? It was it. The engine finally got put together, but it was too late. The the Arceus were already set up multiple ones to keep pivoting into those attacks. Even if you don't have any cards in hand, if all of your power is already in play, you can just make use of that setup. Yeah, it's never a good time for an Arceus deck when you never use Trinity Charge or Trinity Nova. Uh, we'll have to see. That's if, true. If, oh if, my goodness. If Michael can actually do one of those two attacks uh, in games two, uh, possibly game three, depending. Mm -hmm. uh, but wow. The, the, the Phantom <laughs> Waves, the Crushing Hammers, that really swings this matchup. It, I think that that just demonstrates what sorts of decks, what sorts of lineups that is being targeted by, the, by that sort of energy disruption. And with hopefully a shift, a shuffle in the prize cards, things can come back, but all the bad luck is out of the way, right? Oh man, my Arceus was all in the prizes. The double crushing hammer right at the start. You couldn't even get off the ground. Arceus V was stranded on the tarmac. Uh, much like a lot of uh, players and uh, <laughs> people coming to uh, this event this weekend, uh, the, the, the plane rides were not the best. But fortunately, uh, everybody still uh, managed to stay safe, which is nice. So I'm glad everybody was able to make it who did make it. 
Of yeah. course. We had a few players uh, opt to just rent a car and drive from the airport they were stuck in. So wow. That's dedication, the I tell dedication. you. Dedication. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, we're here for the prize money. We're here for these packs. We're here for some good gameplay. And sometimes you got to rent a car. A little awkward for Michael here, just uh, considering the matchup, the rows and the prizes, we saw how beneficial that was. Mm -hmm. uh, but two bosses orders for Parker there uh, could prove a little worse for wear as the game goes on. But for right yep. now, Manic we, likes Yeah, to be we've got start. a repeat. <laughs> Michael with the Arceus V in the active, Parker with the Manaphy. But as we saw, this Manaphy is just perfectly fine chilling there for turn after turn after turn. It is interesting that Michael opted to go first. Uh, again, going first is the best in these Arceus V mirror matches because mm -hmm. if you go first, you get access to your V Star first, you get mm -hmm. access to Trinity Nova first. Uh, but when your opponent is playing seven cards that can get rid of that uh, powerful colorless energy, maybe it's not the best. We've got Quick Ball here. Can get rid of uh, Charon's Care and start looking for the rest of the puzzle pieces here. The early turns of, of Pokemon are always so enjoyable to me. I don't know what it is. It's like that consistency of just saying, okay, I'm setting up my engine. This is nice. Um, this is before the bricks really start to hurt you, right? It's like you, get to, you still get to feel like you're playing the game here in the opening rounds. And then the players just turn immediately super mean, super cutthroat. I've got the Crushing Hammer. I've got the Valimar VMAX. You don't get to do anything anymore. Get in all your gameplay now, gentlemen. Well, here is that crushing hammer, but a tails. So Michael Dodge, that first hammer. Will Parker be able to draw some cards to find some more? I believe with this quick ball, we'll be able to try to find that Crobat and get some more cards in this hand. There it is, the Crobat V. Of course, that dark asset ability lets you draw up to six cards. It's always good drawing mm -hmm. cards. Uh, and it's kind of been a little bit shoved by the wayside with the way people have built decks. Uh, we don't really see Professor's Research as a supporter in a lot of these decks anymore, especially when they're playing Inteleon. Yeah, uh, yeah. You are just, you have access to any card in your deck, essentially, so you never really need to draw cards, you just search for cards. But with the way Parker built his deck, uh, it's utilizing those Crobats, utilizing those Professor's Research that we saw just have him explode out the gates that game one. One, in, when you thin out your hand and you're down to one or two cards, the discarding your, your hand for the professor's research is not even that big of a payment because you just naturally have those big pieces that you want. Oh, this could be a big path to the peak here, trying to shut off that Starbirth from Michael's side of things. And with that Arceus V-Star in hand, that was pretty good. Uh, it was going to need to search for that double turbo energy, so... Has to do a little bit of work now to try to get an attack off. Mm -hmm. So Quick Ball going to discard. Yep. Digging through now, trying to still find a way to get that Trinity off. The longer you wait, the more dangerous it becomes. So it does look like Pumpkaboo is in the list for Michael. So could opt to grab it with this Quick Ball, discard that path to the peak. Uh, I believe there's another Quick Ball in Michael's hand too. So a little bit of... Oh. Embarrassment of riches right now. Mm -hmm. And also, again, in the opening turns, you want to take that opportunity to take a deep look in the deck, get an idea of what's in the prizes, what you're missing. It was not an ultra wall, but there is a couple supporters along with that Arceus V-Star and a dark energy. So, again, if you find that Pumpkaboo here, you can get rid of the paths of the peak, use your mm -hmm. star birth, get it done, or... If you just want to keep that path to the peak in play, you can maybe go for Professor's Research to try to get the things. But no, it looks like Pumpkaboo is the card of choice. You see the two cards that Michael has already selected with that uh, eventual Starbirth. <laughs> just making it efficient, of course. We get the evolution into the Starbirth. Picks up a boss's orders. And what was that second card? Uh, the Double Turbo. Gotcha. Double Turbo. So now the pieces are all in place. And there's the boss's orders bringing up the Crobat V. If you're going to get a KO, if you're going to start softening up one of these Pokemon, you want the one that's worth two prizes. And there is that attack. 200 damage thanks to that powerful colorless energy. And mm -hmm. 
that's also one of the reasons that uh, Crobat V has sort of fallen out of favor as yeah. well, because even though it has that powerful draw ability, it's so easy to snipe it up with the boss's orders with, uh, with the Trinity Nova, the Trinity Charges, making it so these big attacks happen a lot faster in the game across a wider variety of decks. So that is unfortunately the, uh, the downside that Parker has opted for here, but now two prizes going to Michael Bergerac, has a Bidoof now in the hand, hopefully sets up that Bibarel, gets the industrious incisors, and keeps this momentum going. We'll see how Parker responds. Well, responds with an Arceus V-Star and an energy to charge it up. So now uh, Trinity Nova is going to be the attack that he ends the turn with, but now it's just if he decides to get some other stuff set up, you have the Arceus V-Star on the bench and opts for the Ranguru here. So really just trying to get some more resources going. The Oranguru has been so important, right? Because if you have an important card in hand, you can put it away for later to avoid a Malamar VMAX attack down the road, that Max Jammer. Um, you're setting up really key Marnie plays. We saw both of these players just Marnieing each other back and forth. And the Oranguru could be, you know, the, the X factor. You need to ha have that final clutch card like a boss's order or some such to end out this game too because Parker it wants to close out this set doesn't want to take it to a game three doesn't want the round to go to time doesn't want to opt for a draw here is trying to get this key win here in the second game of Swiss round four and it looks like with Starburst or uh, the Starburst ability from Parker uh, went and grabbed a crushing hammer along with a professor's research and Opting to put the double turbo energy back on top with that Primate Wisdom just to save it for later. Really heads up play there. But another heads up play from Michael is getting that extra energy on the active. You mm -hmm. just want to kind of hedge your bets against a lot of the crushing hammers and fan of waves that your opponent's going to be playing against you. Already adapting to the devastating loss in turn one, even though it wasn't super quick like we've seen some games uh, where your opponent is dominating when your opponent just keeps you from doing anything and it feels like just this slow spiral down the drain that can sometimes even be much worse for your mental state as a player but Michael's still going strong here in turn uh, in game two and actually has the Arceus V star set up has used that ability and is very confident now in his ability to pivot, hopefully, to Malamars pretty soon. With the hands not looking too bad for Michaels, has a couple supporters, has that v like you said, some energy. And mm -hmm. as long as Parker doesn't draw into more And that air balloon's hammers. going onto the Oranguru? Yeah. Yeah, okay. A little overlap there, but no biggie. All right, that was actually a pretty terrible draw from Parker here. Uh, finds a couple Ultra Ball and a bunch of energy. Uh, not what you want to see here, especially when you're going to search out a few more. Uh, and is really going to have to rely on that Oranguru to try to find some supporter out to this hand. You have Quick Ball, Ultra Ball. Yeah, not really too much. So Michael draws, draws for turn. Uh, Parker still accelerating those energies with the Trinity Charge, the Trinity Nova. And 180 now on the Arceus. Maybe we could see a response with that Hyper Potion. Again, buying another turn very clearly. Bidoof hits the bench. And Michael just thinking about what to do. I think that uh, both players are now on pretty equal terms when it comes to having their initial setup not be disrupted. Everybody's done what they wanted to do here in the early turns. And with a Marty, Michael seems to be fishing for Malamar. There's a Malamar V finally. Pretty good pickup here, and with that, we'll be able to start charging it up, hopefully get a max jammer off in the next couple of turns. You even have, I believe, Raihan in hand, as well as that Professor's Research. So that was a pretty good Marnie from Michael for next turn. Is able to deal the 200 damage with Trinity Nova, get some energies charged up, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on Parker here. And with his board, the way it's set up, I don't know if it's going to really outpace Michael's mm, here. Yeah, because now you have something to finally pivot into. And this is one of the other strengths of Arceus V-Star, is that because it accelerates energies so rapidly to multiple Pokemon, if your opponent doesn't get that knockout immediately, by the time they find it, you've got one or two attackers already powered up and ready to take its place. And Michael now enjoying a little bit of that power for himself. Well, this could be an opening just because one energy was found off Rushing that Trinity hammer. Nova. 
Uh-oh. So the energy is getting a little tight for Michael here. And Parker has, I think, one or two more crushing hammers. Uh, definitely doesn't want to use that fan of waves. You don't want to put back that special energy into the deck when you're about to KO this Arceus in the active. Mm -hmm. And Parker is thinking about the Marnie, reconsiders. It'd be a good Marnie, Parker. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just don't know. But yet the Marnie does indeed hit. That Raihan's going to go away. You, I know Michael is really, really banking on that. But with this Arceus V-Star about to go down, you want to use Raihan's special ability. If your Pokemon had been knocked out on the previous turn, you get to uh, attach an energy from the discard pile and then search your deck for any card. Yeah, and now... Michael is going to have to try to find it again. It's on the bottom of the deck. We got so. the Hyper Potion. Is Parker going to do some kind of fifth I level guess. play of I won't get, take the knockout because I want your Raihan to be bad? That's like way overthinking it. I'm just I'm oh, trying to fish for the line here. Didn't he already play a Marnie? Oh, he's doing Primate Wisdom. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was really scared for a second. The so Forbidden Double Marnie. New meta. <laughs> Yeah, has to explain to the judge there. there okay, we're making sure everything's yeah, cool. Uh, it might have been an uh, extra card drawn. Oh. The so they're going to check the tapes here. We're going to make sure this is all keen. There was a bit of a meme a while ago with uh, players sure. like doing Marnie incorrectly, but that's why we have the judge at the table, folks. We get this all set up. We have extra eyes on the table. And I know a few of our eagle eyed viewers, no doubt probably saw a little bit of a missequencing here if there was any. I'm staring at this at this damage Arceus V-Star <laughs> right now. I'm not looking at over at the uh, at the Marnie. Well, there is only three cards in hand, so that would be four cards total. So he didn't draw the fifth card, I think, is what it was. Hmm. So he Primate Wisdom before he got that fifth card. So to make it all it all syncopatico, you just draw the Marnie and whatever cards underneath it? I, I'm not too sure. We will try to get confirmation, but it looks like they work things out. Oh, I, I have no idea. And we can Sorry get no back idea. to play here. Uh, path? So and they're just going. So it looks like it's going to be Path. Is the Primate Wisdom just denied then? The, the judge says you're not allowed to do that anymore. But oh. I think a double Orangaroo, maybe. Oh, hmm. Oh, it was Orangaroo before the Marnie? And yeah. Then, okay. Uh, but thankfully, they caught it when he was about to go into it. Oh, so. yeah, because he had taken the card out yeah, of his hand, yeah. and so he didn't get to see an extra card. So, whew. Good job to the, uh, to the judges there. They've been really oh, working no. hard. And with that, uh, getting rid of the Raihan in Michael's hand, that was just a retreat into the Pumpkaboo. And this is where you just go, ah, I don't know what I can do. And now, oh no, another heads on Crushing Hammer. The Crushing Hammer's finally coming out of the woodwork. Michael enjoyed a lot of room, a lot of space to get set up in the opening turns. But now, without the threat level of the Malamar V Max showing up a bit too late, now the crushing hammers and the fan of waves are going to begin disrupting this uh, this beautiful setup that Michael had here in the second game. Yep, and there we see the knockout on the active, the stealth poison to save this Crobat VMAX to the bench. You can bring up that Orangaroo with the air balloon. Uh, it does kind of put it in harm's way a little bit, but it is your pivot to get out. So if Michael does nothing yet again, you have a way to just keep taking prizes. Yeah. With Parker's deck built with this disruption, you, we, we see constantly the Orangaroo, the Manaphy, just hanging out in the active. These normally very dangerous, precarious Pokemon, they don't mind it because they, they are inadvertently just made safe by my opponent does not have the energy. And look at this. You have that Professor's Research to be able to draw some cards here, but you're discarding a lot of those Pokemon. Mm-hmm. But you kind of have to. If you, if you don't do it this turn, you're not really attacking. <laughs> All right, there's the bench. Professor's Research goes in for seven cards. We're looking for, hopefully, Bibarel, Industrious Incisors. Oh, no. This double, Path is in play. Turbo. Luminion's uh, not going to do anything. Oh, no. You got Palpad doesn't do anything. Another Path Quick Ball doesn't even really do anything. I, I guess you can Quick Ball for the Pumpkaboo. 
and discard the path, then you Luminion, but you already used so your Michael's on supporter two? for the turn. On two what? Pumpkaboo? Oh, no, yeah, they just knocked it out. That's right. Yeah, sorry. No, I some so I I think it was a tech a long time ago to have two pumpkaboo when Path was like destroying no, everyone. No, yeah. It was just the one that got knocked okay. out by the crowbat. Yeah, it, it's looking dire oh. for Michael here. And such a strong opening too, especially compared to the game one. Michael Bergerac got set up immediately with the Arceus. Uh, the whiff on the first crushing hammer was able to just smoke through, but again without that. Trinity charge onto a Malamar VMAX and then pivot into take over, get the lockdown all set up. And I, again, Jeremy, I think it's my own curse. I'm always so excited to see this deck and it just <laughs> never, it misses, it misses the timing. It's like a relay race where you hand off the baton and, and Malamar is just not there. You hand off that baton, but then the baton disappears because all your energy is in the discard. <laughs> but uh, Parker... Ironically, I think it's kind of been demonstrating a bit more of what Michael's deck wants to do, yeah. right? Where you are just have so, so much value on the bench, so much energy in play. It's a, just a cornucopia over there. And then you just have the fan of waves and the crushing hammer to lock your opponent out of not necessarily key plays, but disrupting those plays for one or two turns. And that's all you need. Yeah. Uh, this this whole format is really just about those first four turns. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're able to do your game plan in those first four turns, most of the time, you're going to come out a, a winner depending on the matchup. Mm. Uh, and that's why Parker is like, well, I'm going to put these seven cards in my deck that make it to where I can buy myself a turn or two at least. And if I do that and my deck runs good... I'll, I'll get these match wins. And it's been running good. All the crushing hammers coming out and just being able to chain them back to back like that. It doesn't matter if you flip, you know, two heads out of three, three, you know, two tails. As long as you hit the one at the key time, that's an atom bomb. Hey. Orangaroo also going back onto the bench with the air balloon. And now we've got this Crobat VMAX. Good old 70, a poison and switch. Bring up that Manaphy with the double turbo just so you can retreat it again. That uh, mm -hmm. is a little too important right now, but. And what's great about the Manaphy is you aren't really trying to protect your bench at this point. This no. isn't the matchup for it. It's a single prize Pokemon and you're already ahead. You just need to get one more KO. And now with uh, Parker Lish at three prize cards left, Michael is it's going to be very difficult to get a Malamar VMAX into play because then you're just putting those three prize cards potentially back into the running for Parker Lish to get that final attack with the boss's orders or some shenanigan, I imagine. Bibro finally hitting as well. Industrious Incisors going to get a bit more draws, but what is Michael looking for here, Jeremy? Um, the next round. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what it seems like. Uh, you have that air balloon. You can draw five with Industrious Incisors, but you need to find that double turbo energy and an Arceus V-Star. Found the double turbo energy, but no Arceus V-Star. And with that, you can deal 110 damage. You can get a knockout on this Manaphy. Uh, you kind of might need to. Uh, but Do we just have to retreat into just... Trinity charge, no damage, just get the energy. Oh, no, it's too late for that. You have no basic energy left in the deck. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that last Trinity Nova that Michael had, uh, you just attached one energy to the Arceus V on the bench, no energy on that Malamar V that was in the active. So, at so least Parker's just had this game just under his thumb the entire yeah. time. Any energy that gets attached get discarded. Any energy that get accelerated into play, I just boss that baby back up into the active and KO it, and they go to the discard pile anyway. Well, Parker hasn't found some of the boss orders yet. They're two in the prizes still uh, <laughs> after <laughs> three prize cards being <laughs> taken. Uh, but can still try to get some damage on this Arceus, and it's the only attacker Michael has. You have zero energy yet again from the Trinity Nova. You know your opponent is only going to have double turbo energy left. And there's the line. Is there... I'm trying to think. There's Fan. That goes back on the bottom. So Arceus not going to be able to attack anytime soon. Is there a way for Michael to maybe snipe this Orangaroo? 
then get one more uh, KO on an, on that damaged Arceus V-Star. It looks so juicy over there on the bench. So much damage on it. That's two prize guards that Michael's definitely counting on here. Well, Parker did find the last boss's orders in his deck, so brings up that Malamar V and will be able to take a knockout with any of the three, <laughs> the three uh, Pokemon that Parker has on the bench. Brings mm -hmm. up that fresh Arceus V-Star. And with this, we'll just need one more knockout. We know there's going to be a boss's orders in the two prize cards that Parker takes. Mm -hmm. So that means if Michael doesn't disrupt the hand, it is game over, match over. Parker's going on to 4-0. Very impressive indeed. Uh, Arceus enabling so many different things, but this deck just takes that to the next level of not just I want to enable my own win condition, but also finding space in the list for disruption to stop the opponent. And we hear, yeah, Michael plays that. Boss's orders brings up that damaged Arceus V-Star, but with that, Parker is just sitting with that boss's orders in hand, just waiting for Michael to play the turn. I don't care what you do. Yep. I'm going to play this card, and that's going to be it. Has the Bidoof and the Bid Barrel just sitting there. with their, They're sitting in the line of sight. <laughs> Industrious incisors drawing up to five. Marnie, not enough. Already used boss there to bring this up. There is the knockout, so Michael does go down to... One prize card here, I believe, and Michael not even going to look through the deck for the for the Trinity charge, the Trinity Nova. And there we go, mm -hmm. Boss's orders able to clean up this game, and with that, Parker moves on to four and zero oh here to start off Sakakis, and with a deck that has proven itself time and time again with you know some seven cards to throw in a little spice there. And when you can do well against one Arceus deck, you're feeling pretty confident that you can do well against pretty pretty much any other variant that you're going to run into. And the Crushing Hammer fan of Waves has just been so important for disrupting Mew. It was one of the early ways that players were trying to do that. It's what basically taps into what Whimsicott was doing and getting a lot of value out of doing. So you're just now becoming an amalgamation of other win conditions on top of Arceus. You love it. Yeah, you love to see it. And we started off our day with a win for Arceus, but also a loss. So we'll have to see how it mm. comes out. But we do have a winner's interview coming right up. So don't go anywhere.